today's New You segment, you're about to meet an inspirational role model, a man who lost half his size and went from an overweight teen to a lean, muscular adult after hitting rock bottom and deciding it was time to make a drastic change. It's hard to believe, but this lean man with a six-pack was once morbidly obese. As a teen, Charles D'Angelo weighed a whopping 360 pounds. The weight took a toll on his self-esteem. He was lonely, miserable, and contemplated ending his life. Food was his source of comfort, his addiction, and what was slowly killing him. At 17 years old, he decided to regain control of his life, and over the next two years, changed his attitude and dropped 160 pounds, and he's kept it off. Now his life's mission is to help others conquer their own food struggles and get healthy. He's sharing his secrets to weight loss success in his new book, Think and Grow Thin. And Charles D'Angelo joins me now. Charles, welcome. Thanks so much. Good to Thanks see you. Thanks so much, Dr. Steve. Good to see you. All right. So, so tell me about this big aha moment that happened to you. What was it? Something happened, right, where you decided, okay, this is enough. Well, it was a lot of things. Looking outside of myself for the answer, I realized something was missing. I mean, at 17, weighing 360 pounds, not able to make it up a flight of just four stairs. Mm -hmm. Anytime I would lay on a sofa or lay on my bed, my stomach was so so, so large, having a size 50-inch waist, that it would obscure the television set in front of me. I had no friends. I had no social life. Uh, a girlfriend was an afterthought, much mm -hmm. less a normal friends. So I felt so lonely, so desperate. And looking outside of myself, I said, something's missing. There's no lack of diet books. There's no lack of exercise programs, but there's something missing because if all these programs, all these diets that are out there, all these machines that are out there that claim to transform a person in just 90 days, if they really worked, I figured that we wouldn't have the problem that I had. So right. I realized the missing link was in mindset. There. Right. Mm -hmm. So and part of it is this kind of abnormal relationship that you Absolutely. had with food and people have with food. So what are three tips you would say to help people establish a normal relationship with food? Well, the, the three things I would say is this. I look at this whole process as a three-legged stool. One is diet, of course. One is exercise. And the most important missing link that everything else is lacking is the mindset. So a tip for diet is replace spontaneity with strategy. You need to set up a system so that you can totally disconnect from food and eventually learn how to reconnect to food. Once you're healthy, everything in moderation is fine when it's appropriate. So set up a schedule of food so that food becomes as basic as hygiene. A regular pattern of eating about six times a day, making sure you're having lots of fruits, lots of lean proteins, lots of leafy green vegetables, cruciferous vegetables are great, and having that so routine that you don't even have to think about it. Because many people that come to see me, no matter if they're a national level politician, or if they're a teenager, or they're a stay-at-home mom, they struggle with having to make the decisions day to day. So tip Tip one, replace spontaneity with strategy. With the exercise, that second leg of the stool, make cardiovascular exercise a routine every single day. Like I talked about food becoming as basic as hygiene, your exercise has to as well. And it does not need to be something that's overwhelming and makes you feel that you're going to cough up blood or that right. you can barely go any further. Walking on a treadmill is a great way to start. Get a treadmill or join a gym, or if you can't afford it, if you come from a family like I did where Just those things walk. are luxury. Walk from your front porch down to the end of the street and back. And I say shoot for 35 minutes, 20 to 35 minutes, to start with a day and gradually build your way up. The third and most important, of course, is the mindset. How do you really come to disconnect from food? I think that goes back to the idea of setting up a schedule that's producing results. And in my book, Think and Grow Thin, I outline here's exactly what to eat, when to eat, how much to eat. You select a set of foods that's a very balanced diet. And by disconnecting and by making the decisions something that you don't have to face every day, they're already programmed, they're already there, it's already part of your day, you don't give so much emotional attachment to it. And most of the people that come to see me, the biggest thing they struggle with is what I call the yellow light syndrome. They have a, a red light traffic signal in their head that works, a green light, but that pause, that moment in between where they stop and really think before they eat. You know the old saying, look before you leap, well look before you eat. All right. you look at that fork, take a moment before you put it in your mouth. You really have to get into that mindset, and you're clearly there, Charles. Thanks so much. Really <laughs> it's my pleasure, Dr. Good Steve. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. My pleasure. All right. Again, the book is called Think and Grow Thin. It's available in stores and online now. Up next, from me to you, your doctor's orders.